type of hunter we've seen today. Uh, that's right, yeah, yeah, along with the, the dragon, the face, and of course what Surrender is bringing along with uh, these players here in the Highlander variant. And for Samuel Sell, like you were saying about last week, it, for me it wasn't even that bad, uh, the Alex Straza pick. There were so many other much more egregious things in his play, and I'm not trying to rag on him too hard about it, uh, but I'm just trying to paint the picture here that it is time for him to prove us wrong, show us that he's not the underdog and uh, the weakest player down in Division B, despite the fact we've only seen him play once overall here in APAC. But maybe one way he can do that is the fact that he's been left up with a warrior there, Gia. Yeah, Blitzjunk does it again. You know what? I've actually been playing a tournament held by my friend Demi called House Rivalries. Mm -hmm. It's just a small thing compared to GM, of course, but we do have a similar format where week to week we are playing and bringing lineups for Conquest. And I recently faced a player, Fong, g -g 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 -g, lots of Gs oh, at yeah. the end. I'm aware. Also from and he also yep. left up my warrior. I just had a very standard lineup as well. So interesting. And they just seem to have a plan about, I don't know, maybe they see some weakness in warrior that we don't. Granted, I did lose with warrior at one point, but that was my own fault. I straight up messed up the game. There were winning lines that I missed. But what I noticed is that Fung was going very, very um, honed in on removal. Even when it seemed very inconvenient for him as Demon Hunter to deal with my 110 Warmall Challenger, he would remove right. it. And that would actually gut my game plan for the early game. So maybe they've found some type of technology or just a mindset on the matchup, which we keep saying this every week, but I hope this time we get to finally understand what that is. I hope we do as well, because, uh, well, if you haven't seen hot takes for this week, you can go to the Hearthstone Esports <laughs> Twitter page where it is available to be seen, where one of the hot takes that TJ and Subtle discussed was whether or not it is justifiable to not ban Warrior at the moment. And to be honest, I am fully on the side of, you just kind of have to. The only way it feels like with a conventional lineup to be getting the job done is to get rid of that Warrior. Maybe if you're going for a completely off-the-wall deck, um, uh, overall lineup where you're bringing some very unconventional archetypes you can go for a demon hunter ban maybe but for me it just feels so much more important to get rid of the warrior maybe though gia not wanting to throw too much shade here i wonder if this is a disrespect ban from blitz chung here because okay. the warrior is in my opinion far and away the hardest deck to play at the moment in hearthstone mm -hmm. and we have seen from samuel sout he has not looked up to par to be perfectly honest Although maybe I'm reading too much into it, because yeah. of course Blitzchung here uh, has just been consistently not right. favoring the warrior. Stirring the pot, I see, Derek. And you know what? I would be on board if it were any player aside from Blitzchung <laughs> and Kin who have always been banning warrior. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to view any GM drama, it just does seem to be consistent with whatever this plan. Until today, we still do not understand, and it has not been panning out that well for Kin at least, but for Blitzchung, it seems that he's able to take the wins, but not because he's like consistently beating Warrior, but more like yeah. letting it take its win and then beating the other decks. Well, the drama is clearly brewing up here in APAC G. It's, it, I mean, it's a little bit more West Side Story than I would like where <laughs> Tyler is starting fights by just dancing on his opponent. I don't really get what that's all about. But <laughs> I think for the main thing, even though I am trying to stir up the drama here, like you say, it, I think will not work out well for Blitzchung. I am just left without any idea as to what his overall game plan against Warrior is, other than just saying he doesn't think it's that good, which is his opinion. The statistics would disagree. The majority of other pro players would disagree. But at the very least, he's bringing it this week. He realizes that it is a top four deck in terms of the overall power level. Yes, that is the difference. Can... I am not sure, but I would assume that the lineup is the same as Blitzchung's. And just the fact that they've brought it is an increase in respect for the deck at the very least. We might see the elusive ban come out from them next week. But for now, it is just going to be Warrior from Samuel Tsao first up against Blitzchung's Rogue. Already with a Hanar on turn two. Pretty decent. And oh. with an insane hand for Samuel Tsao. Blitzchung's... Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the Hanar there for a decent start, but... I like every card in Samuel Sal's hand at the moment. Yeah. This is just a full keep for me. And I can see the reason for throwing Hanar. It's the Warmall Challenger. It just lines up I guess very so, yeah. well. Unless you're able to put a secret in play immediately, which doesn't happen until turn four, of course. So I am liking the mulligan from Blitzchunk to find oh, something more in the realm of clearing threats from Samuel Sal. 
Yeah, on the other side for Samuel Sal, the mulligan is one of the hardest parts for me in Warrior. It's starting to get a little bit easier, I think, as I play more and more of the deck. You see some of the common threads of what you're looking for in different matchups. But this whole hand just works together so beautifully. The only card that I think is not an auto-keep in most matchups is the Rampage. But I just love the recognition that it's so likely to be mm -hmm. so powerful with the War Mall on the next couple of turns. I will say, though, for Blitzstrong, we haven't been seeing a lot of Ender Rogue lately. People have been defaulting back to the uh, two of Galakron version, but we were saying last week, maybe this matchup, if they had Zephyrus, it could be so different. So if you were going to be bringing a rogue, I do like taking that approach of a different archetype. Yep. I agree with that for sure. The Highlander did look much more powerful last week and the statistics reflected that. In the shadows. I mean, it's really bad, can't be targeted by Warmall and kind of loads up a way to remove something like Bomb Wrangler or even a Terran on Curve if the dagger comes down alongside it. I'm sensing a dagger pass here. I don't think you want to be attacking into the Sky Raider when that potentially activates Rampage, Battle Rage, uh, even just something like a uh, uh, an on-curve Bloodsworn, although they probably wouldn't go for that. It's just not worth giving them the option. I agree. We're still seeing the eggs in the list from Samuel Tsao, of course, because he's running Terran. And that is a version that I feel has fallen out of fashion just a little bit. He's also not got the Ramesh Hell screen. In this particular matchup, I also feel that eggs aren't quite help very helpful because of mm. Blackjack Stunner. Yeah. But now for Samuel Tsao, this is where he can start opening up the part of the matchup that I think is what makes Warrior so favorable here, which is straight up Damahe. You can get the Live Wire Lance online swinging to the face. And all of a sudden, with a Battle Rage in hand, as long as he finds some way to get the card draw through to the Corcrons, Romash, whatever burst damage he wants, I think he's in a great position this game. Mm -hmm. It's like pretty straightforward mana saver turn for Blitzchung here. Actually going to trade and respect this. This is already looking like what I've seen from Fung, which is just clearing the minions from the warrior. The yeah. warrior doesn't have minions. They can't get the synergy with half their deck, essentially. The problem is usually that the minions are too sticky. Mm. Well, speaking of sticky minions, just a straight up 110 Warm World Challenger could be played here with a taunt as well to bring it up to 11. Is that just the best play on this turn, Gia? Everything else looks fairly vulnerable. Yeah. A uh, 112, sorry. Yeah. What did I say? 11, but I oh, understand sorry. because that is just a saying turn it up to 11. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was going for. Keep up, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. So the 112. It's very scary against Zephyrus, I would say. Uh, other than that, I kind of like the sound of it. I was even potentially looking at setting that up so then he could, if Blitzchung doesn't develop any unstealth minion, damage it with the Kobold and then rampage right. it. Yeah, that's fine. That, that sounds very powerful. Obviously, you're walking into Flick then, which is what you're always afraid of. Right. But I wouldn't have minded so much against that. Whoa. That's a pretty good one. 4-5 with Taunt. Death Rattle game armor equal to this minion's attack. That's premium. Yeah. Good sustain for Blitzchung here. But we can crucially see now that Samuel Tsao has a damaged minion, which he can rampage and potentially just get through one of the taunts with Weapon and Kobold Lackey. I do really like holding on to the Lackey here as well to set up for mm -hmm. the Togwaggle, of course, because right. Samuel Sal's, uh, the biggest thing that Blitzchung was afraid of was any way of clearing it off, be it the Risky Skipper, the uh, Inner Rage, whatever. Just want to guarantee yourself Tog on the following turn. Right, so when I look at the sport state, first thing I want to do is find a way to get the Corcron to the face. Okay. Um, is there any way to do that? It involves playing the other Corcron, but that means you can't play the Rampage. Does this work? 
little ball. I don't think it's quite this. Oh! That is premium! That's huge! Oh, can you just go Terran now? Okay. Yeah, Terran, trade, rush it trade in. Trade the 1-1 one, one first, right? 1-1 one, one trades in first. Great. Terran, rush the Terran. That is really strong. Great spot yeah. there. From both you and Samuel Tsao. It's a little bit funky because you don't get to attack with the first one. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, no. It's good. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess the main thing it, is it, it just locks out the uh, Pogwackle, really. It's not completely locked out, but of course it makes it so scary for Blue. Now, yeah. Samuel Tsao has the full mana to find a way to damage Corcron and copy it with Bloodsworn. That's the biggest punish. Granted, that's a several card combo, especially if you're including Rampage. Yeah. So Blitzstrom might still just be thinking, I need to get the wand online if I have to have any chance of swinging the game. And to be fair, he has more life to play with now that he, of course, has the Zephyrus for healing. Oh. Gonna use it for Shadow or Death instead, or Eviscerate. Yeah, it's Zephyrus. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's like that playstyle you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Fung, Blitzchung, whatever teammate it may be in the uh, Hong Kong practice squad, they are all in on the removal plan. The way the Warmall lines up with Hanar is pretty crazy. Just ends up with a 1-5 after clearing Blitzchung's 1-5, which he can then rampage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. I'm looking at trying to set up lethal over the next couple of turns, though, for Samuel Tsao, which... Okay. I think involves Ankar and probably going face on this turn. Uh, it might be getting a bit too aggressive there. But he's getting really close and there's not much that can stand in the way. I definitely get the reasoning for setting up lethal, as long as the Hanara is cured. Yes, I definitely like this yes. because yeah, yeah. so many secrets can get in the way of charging minions. So close! Mm -hmm. Wait, is that a two mana Wondrous Wand? What? Oh no, it's not a Discover. Because it's. Oh, is that lethal? Three two options? Two Rampage? Um, seven, nine. Doesn't quite have mana, right? Okay. The Corcron can't fit, but there's so much damage with Inner Rage. Seven, nine, ten, eleven. It's 13 that I can see. Yeah. What now? Or 14 if you use Corcron instead of the other uh, Rampage. So are we looking at some type of Battle Rage turn now to gather more resources for the post-wand yeah. turn? What now? Kind of funny, that interaction. I didn't actually know that the wording is choose a fantastic tre treasure rather than discover, because that would have been pretty sick otherwise. But either way, sorry, I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, the point is, uh, past this point, <laughs> the main thing is that, yeah, you just want to try and set up to draw some kind of a taunt, be it see a map, maybe get Alex Straza uh, off the top as well, because there are outs here for Blitzchum, very much so. Mm -hmm. Bronx is always a big one if you have Galakrond active. Yep. Alright, big push from Samuel Tsao. I like it, he holds on to Inner Rage. Oh. And he has lethal. Blitzchung needs a incredibly powerful wand here to pull things Ooh. back. Flick is huge, but it doesn't taunt up or protect his health total in any yeah. form. It's so good, but it's just not quite good enough. Even with the Waste oh. Warden to deal with two pirates. The pirate. <laughs> Very <laughs> cute. And of course, Bloodsworn drawn for good measure for Samuel Tsao. Yeah, so many ways to lethal here for Samuel Tsao. And he does end up taking the first win with the Warrior. I wonder if Blitzchung will ever be able to be convinced of the power of Warrior at the moment. Because it feels like even though he's been doing very well with his strategy of leaving up Warrior, he is just consistently being beaten with this specific deck. Yeah. And I'm trying to get into the mindset of maybe it's just a lineup decision in terms of you leave this up, you let it get a win, yep. target something else. 
which is a valid strategy in Conquest. But if the deck you're banning loses to more things than Warrior does, then why not just ban the Warrior? Unless he thinks that Zoo beats more, more of his decks than Warrior does, which I just can't agree with. Well, we can keep guessing until uh, we drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out what the Warrior <laughs> is doing being left up here for Blitzchung week after week. But of course, he is down 0 and 1 now versus, uh, sorry, uh, versus Samuel Sao. It would be a big win. For Samuel Sao, it would be his first win we've seen from him on broadcast in Hearthstone Grandmasters, given that we didn't see him at all in the first three weeks and only one match from him last week. So I think that was a very good, a very good start from him there to start showing us a little bit more about what he's got right from the start. Loved the mulligan, loved the game plan of playing very aggressive, looked much more on point for him there. So we'll have to see if he can keep things up and take down Blitzchung, who's been doing very well so far after this short break. This is the final day here, of, or sorry, the final match of the day here for Asia Pacific Hearthstone Grandmasters. We are, of course, going to send you, as usual, over to uh, Europe after this with Sotl and Raven, and then Americas with TJ and Dan at the end of the day. But first, man, Gia, this is some absolutely on the edge of your seat Hearthstone we are seeing from these players here. We are seeing the heartbreak from Frosty and Dawn going down to 0 and 3 in Division B. So close! Uh, for Staz to be our first player to go up to 3-0. and oh. And now in our final series of the day, it really is just for me the story of Samuel Sao trying to prove his spot here in Grandmasters. And based on what we've seen so far today, he's looking much more on form. 
Yep. If you're going to cook up any drama, the one I like to see is a redemption arc. And Samuel Tsao has been on point today with the warrior gameplay. And you know what? That's nothing to scoff at. The deck is very difficult. And a lot, a lot of the times you just expect it to get banned. So you might not even be practicing it as much as some yeah. of the other decks. But particularly against Blitzjung, as we keep saying time and time again, there is no respect, no warrior ban. And you know what? Not even a demon hunter ban. He bans the zoo. He does indeed. Taking a look at the rest of his lineup, it's not necessarily quite so obvious why he would do that. Maybe it is in no small part uh, due to just the rest of his, I don't know, it getting underneath the rest of his decks in terms of the uh, the Highlander Hunter. One of the things we have been hypothesizing about leaving up Warrior is the fact that the Highlander Hunter feels like it does fairly well against it, just with placing a lot of threats over the course of the game. But I still think I'd rather get rid of the Highlander, oh, sorry, of the Demon Hunter rather than the Zoo based on Blitzchung's lineup. Yeah, I was about to make an argument that I think week one, we were seeing Highlander Rogue actually have a positive win rate against Demon Hunter. Okay, fair. Um, yeah. But a lot has changed since then. Yes, Demon Hunter's been nerfed, but the big one is that Zephyrus doesn't give Sackpack anymore because uh, Sackpack can only target friendly demons, and that is yep. a huge factor in that matchup. But I do think the Highlander Rogue still is in with a shot versus Demon Hunter, and that's the matchup we're going to see right now. Oh, excellently set up, Gia, as always. The Spy Mistress on one is premium here for Blitzchung. One of the main reasons that you are including this in your deck at the moment is because it does so well against Demon Hunter. It's just stealth. They have no way to interact with it early on, and it's a guaranteed removal spell. It's uh, so good that we've seen some decks even go so far as to include Worgen Infiltrator, I think is a 2-1 stealth. <laughs> oh Obviously, my. that's some of the weaker classes at the moment, like Jambray is experimenting with that in Shaman. But honestly, when you play it, it doesn't feel that bad, and it really does just show how good Spy Mistress is in this matchup. Yeah, nothing like the just straight up power creep minion, power crept oh, yes. on minion to show you the strength of a even better minion. What a meta we live in right now. Shield bearer, don't us war. <laughs> Worgen infiltrator, leper known post nerf. I love it. We've never been so advanced and yet so backwards all at the same time. <laughs> that is a good way of putting the year 2020 in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. It is a, a Hearthstone metagame. Yes. <laughs> okay, we could see Battle Fiend, but coining the sidekick feels so futile because Blitzchung could simply dagger and trade down the 1 4. So I like the discipline from Samuel Tsao here. Hold on to it. Maybe pair it with Frozen Shadow Keeper to yeah, make I agree it completely. seal fake. Let proof. him trade. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is it? A little bit awkward as to how you sequence this next. Sorry, sequence this next from Samuel Sao. Uh, and I guess it also actually depends on whether or not Blitzchung even trades the Spy Mistress here, because it looks like he was tempted by the dagger hit twice. Yeah, it's. I think he held on to it because he's scared of the coin frozen wow. Shadow Weaver, which is exactly what Samuel Sao has available. But if that's the play, then Blitzchung can simply trade in his Spy Mistress into that. Just still kind of a win. It leaves up the battle. Very here, smart. But. I yeah. think he gets the ideal target for the Spy Mistress. However, now we're looking at with the Glaivebound being found for Samuel Sao. I'm seeing just a very nice, clean play of Umberwing here on turn two. You don't swing. And then turn three, probably Frozen Shadow Weaver into Coin Glaivebound on turn four. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty nuts. Yeah. Always feels bad not to swing when you have a... Uh, the Battlefield one, or wow, I blanked yeah. out on the name for a second. I'm actually looking at Sidekick Hero Power here. I kind of like this. Really? So this makes it so that, of course, you get extra damage with the Battlefield. Oh. And now, let's show this expenditure of the dagger hit in order to set up for Spy Mistress into Frozen Shadow Weaver. He's no longer online. He's going to trade the Spy Mistress instead. And then Samuel Tell potentially gets to stick his Shadow Weaver. Oh, fair enough. Or just Umberwing on this turn still sets up for the Coin Glaivebound next turn. And of course, the hero power means that you're just trading really nicely against the Micro Mummy as well. Yep. That second draw, however, makes it even more difficult because now oh, yeah. you want to go hero power, swing, then equip the Umberwing, mm -hmm. and then go Coin Glaivebound into Glaivebound. Hmm. That which seems is fine. Probably just fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just like that curve. The question is whether he kills off the Pharaoh Cat or 
He kills off the first half of the mummy and maintains a 1-1 beaming sidekick on the board. I think I prefer killing off the mummy. Okay. Well, he's going to kill it off entirely and give up a charge. Maybe this is okay. letting him deviate into coin glaive bound into metamorphosis instead. Not terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very far from strictly worse. There are very clear upsides of this play, and there's a good chance he'll draw enough stuff to fill out his turn anyway. Metamorphosis on turn five could just be the play anyway. Yeah, the immediate upside is just setting up this board, which is yep. a little bit awkward for Blitzchung had he not had this Bone Wraith, which really helps protect the Pharaoh Cat after it takes a VT. It probably actually just gets Glaive Bound down in the end. The twin slice off the top means Sam oh, himself could have his cake and eat gosh, it. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> it was a pretty simple turn. Get into this, coin the blue bone, deal with that. And he's left with a 6 4 up against Samuel Tsao's 2 1. I mean, against Blitzjung's 2 1. And Blitzjung, he needs Faceless Corruptor off the top, or something to that effect. That's not a bad That's one at all. That's a good draw. That is a very good draw. Step the cap, Problem see is... what you get. The problem is, he really wanted the cat attack to go into the glaive bound. Of course, he needs to step it though. Just a way to clear it off immediately. I okay, I can get it. Probably would have preferred yeah. to see the cat first. Not in case you get that, but in case you were <laughs> to get uh, the wasteland assassin, which is pretty nice to stealth with. Feels bad okay. to get rid of the. the Dragon Bane, but <laughs> killing a Glaive Bound immediately is pretty premium. Yeah, it's just a very fancy battering ram at that point. <laughs> it comes with its own horns. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Oh, and this is a tough choice now for Samuel Sal. Obviously, I'm looking primarily at Glaive Bound Adepts on this turn, but Gia, going into turn six, are you ever killing off both the lackeys to deny Togwaggle, or am I going way too deep? Uh, it just costs too much, doesn't it? To give up a Glaive gamer. Bound this turn. Yeah, I can get behind killing one Lackey, because it's just one damage sunk into it, but this Glaive Bound has to go face. Samuel Sao agrees, and overall, Metamorphosis in hand, the 6-4 on board, I'm on board as well. If the turn is just Togwaggle here, then you get minimum six damage to face from this minion. Very good point. Oh, that is so good for Blitzchung. But the rest of the turn is just a <laughs> stagger. Does he do it? No. <laughs> do you do it? But do you do it, though? Do you want to lose, though? Do you want to get altruist for the whole deck, though? <laughs> is it really that bad? If he's got skull, he's got skull. It's gotta be bad. You know, Samuel Tsao with a smile. He Samuel Tsao knows. I, yeah, I think he does know. <laughs> he knows exactly what's up. <laughs> and I can't even tell if Blitzchung is smiling or grimacing. He doesn't want to show us his reaction. <laughs> Alright. Not feeling so generous today. <laughs> Melee, I wanted to see it just because it would be funny. Gotta be honest here. <laughs> If he's got skull, he's got skull, did you say? Yeah, and he's got the skull. Mm -hmm. Nice easy play. Premium. Not the greatest things to discount. Yep. Definitely not premium outcomes. But with the Sightless Watcher for next turn, if he could just place an Altruist conveniently at the top. I feel like he doesn't need to rush. Yeah, yeah. I fully agree. Even the other skull, or say a spectral sight, just getting an altruist, suddenly this hand is looking insane if that happens. I think you need to be a little bit careful about just assuming that you're going to get altruist off the top. It's like three out of 16 is not especially likely to find it at that yeah, point. I'm thinking of also just second skull, spectral sight, anything for yep. more draw. And if None of that comes together. Warglaze with Azanoth, definitely still fine. I 
there's actually some reason to go for the tw second twin slice there rather than the second slice. Weirdly worded enough, just to make sure that his I beam is kept in the middle because it would cost zero instead of one, given right. that it was drawn off of Skull. Sure. But he'll but draw a card. But this keeps more information. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he'll just draw a card anyway next turn. They will never Not a bad one. Oh, I wonder card if draw keeps rolling. I wonder if he ever starts with side votes. Oh, never mind. He gets the Alchemist anyway. I was like, Ooh. go for the side list. Try to okay. snipe the Alchemist, then you draw it. Everybody be chill. Nobody overreact. Oh, Give this Chinese information. Skull. I'm with the second skull off yes! the top of Samuel Sao. He's just setting up for the ultimate combo now, right? This is this becomes his game plan. This is just OTK Demon Hunter now. <laughs> Who said this deck died? <laughs> Never did. In the shadows. But we've been not talking about how powerful Blitzjump's next turns could be. There's Crocs available now. Dragon Queen Alex Raza, that's probably a board that withstands Altruist. The Kronks for AoE? I like that. You could even just go Hanar Seeker right now. Yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Huge swing. It's done at a healthy life total, but I think he has to know that something's been brewing with Samuel Tso. Something is brewing, but Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, I think, on average, has a pretty good chance of just getting straight up out of range of Altruist. Eight right. damage mm -hmm. nowadays is a lot to deal. It is definitely a lot to deal, but not impossible, I would say. Definitely Any not. further card draw from the Skull of Gul'dan could be game-changing. I'm thinking Spectral Sight, I'm thinking the other Crimson Sigil Runner. That's getting held in hand, 100%. Um, I think you can pre-equip the Warglaves. I agree. Strangely enough, what you said about hmm. holding the other second slice is coming into play for the next turn, possibly. Because if he wants to just play everything in this order, I think that the, um... I beams are gonna cost one instead of zero. Yeah. I grow impatient. Do you like the Wargly smack face? That's what I'm looking at. I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if he's trying to go I beam and uh, the Warglaves to take out the Bronx. Oh, he's killing. Okay. No. I was gonna kill him there. Yeah, I think that gets a little bit too weak to bamboozle. You're ramping up the damage significantly. But... Oh, Resident Shadow Weaver's tempting. I'm still disliking Alex Draza. It definitely is the quickest path to counter lethal. With the split Are you really I... not playing it because of Altruis? What if... if it's just Frozen Shadow Weaver, I would say it's not good enough, but there's a chance to discover Never Surrender Counterspell. A lot of... Oh, Snipe even! Just things that mess yeah, with the Altruis true. game plan. I don't know if that's a good that's enough true. reason. But there are ways to completely shut this off from Sacramento Tau. So far, none available, though. Yeah, these are not the ones he's looking for. Oh. Netherwind Portal just gets eaten up. Pack Tactics just, yeah, looks overall the best one. In the well, the very thing is Samuel Tau has got to be scared. I think it was... Okay, one Hunter, one Mage. So does this ever make him DVA play around Snipe now? It's already... It does. One one damage that Samuel Cell will yep. be missing because of this jump play. To be honest, it looks like he may struggle to get up to even just six. True. Depends what comes off the top of the first. Yeah. Yeah. Both of these eye beams are costing one at least, so he doesn't have that much mana to work with. Mm -hmm. That does allow for six damage AoE. Just, I believe. Probably take Kane here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's dealing with Kronks. The other one is dealing with Nar. And was Samuel Tal supposed to go face for? Oh, he's frozen. Never mind. Yeah. That's explosive trap. I mean, you can just hold on to those, right? It equals one yeah. damage to face either way. Uh, bar taunt, but it is very niche. So, and he has for flexibility, probably makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. 
I like it. I like it. A lot of damage on the board, and Blitzchung is relying on Alex Traza to provide the answer. Ooh. I mean, he's got Vendetta and still. And he can summon a 6-6 six, so. six this yeah, turn. That is also true. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty cool interaction. Zoraku and Rogue. Rogue. Same. So that is 19 on board for Blitzchung. Not quite counter lethal represented. Um. Is this lethal if none of the secrets are counter uh, countering stuff? I think we saw Noble Sack, so... Hmm. Well, we saw Ice Barrier, right, as the mage secret. Right, that's the big one. I mean, obviously Samuel Sal's got to go for it here. He's just dying way too quickly now. And that is the last thing in the world he wanted to see. Yep. When is this battle mage ever going to be able to resolve its attack? Finally. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go for it. The problem is, ace attacks summon more 6-6s, six so he's dead on board. Ugh, disaster. There's just no out. He can't set up a two turn from hand. Hmm. Um, yeah. Maybe metamorphosis now don't shoot. Play. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Nothing gets there. It was a good effort by Samuel Sao, and I think we liked his idea of setting up for the Altruis as well as possibly played around the secrets to his best of his ability, even getting around the snipe by playing around the battle mage first. But in the end, the rogue just had too much to do. It felt like on all of those turns, it curved so nicely from an early game plan where it had plenty of removal and pressure into the Kronks plus the Galakrond. It just did what rogue does best. Very, very powerful there. And we were saying that Highlander Rogue tends to have a little bit more juice against uh, Demon Hunter. It will be a question now, though, of whether the other decks from Blitzjung can get the job done. We do just have a mirror in terms of classes now. Archetypes, though, oh, they're both Highlander Also the hunters. same. Yeah, also yep. the same. Yeah, we've seen this pretty consistently from Blitzchung, is because again, his reputation is that the kind of the king of aggro in Asia Pacific traditionally has been very, very strong with these powerful early game decks. But it feels like he's less of a, a pure face gamer and more of a kind of on curve aggressive deck gamer, which is what he's gone for here with the Highlander Hunter. Of course, we both feel like if you were going to bring Highlander Hunter either last week or this week, this week is definitely the one to do so, given that Rogue has seen uh, a huge uh, dearth of appearances this week and it just feels like it has a little bit more game against some of the slightly slower decks uh like maybe the warrior or the druid true enough i am looking at the differences in text of course as we always always must do in terms of mirrors the waste warden has made its way all the way to blitzstone's highlander hunter as well wow. that could be huge potentially um against fellow beasts or dragons on the other side I think that was maybe included more so for the Druid matchup. The hunt begin. Very possibly, but the Druid matchup is not what we're going to be seeing at all. As a player, bring it. Be quiet, Derek. The thing we are going to be seeing now is the Demon Hunter on Hunter. And Samuel Sao, already right at the start, has got a hand I am very much liking the look of. Very strong, but Blitzjump's hand has no slouch itself. Zephyrus, Bran, Diving Griffin. You like the Diving Griffin, cheer? My favorite card. Doesn't Kaka, sound like you. Kaka. <laughs> he can't coin backstab here. There's nope. no way. Pretty sure you just chill here. He's thinking about it, though. It... Oh, man. Is he thinking coin Zeph power shield ever? Okay. The totem golem. Yeah. What, what's the follow-up? It just seems so weak. If he had anything to do, that would be a snap play, I think. But mm -hmm. with just a hero power on two, you want to set up for the more powerful plays on turn seven. Some great draws, though, here for Samuel Sauer. He is filling the curve, not just with 
weapons and reactive cards proactive damage. I'm talking Bloodfen Raptor levels of proactive. <laughs> I'm looking at Kane. Just by the way the curve is shaped, he's got a three and a five, but no four. Oh. It's pretty premium. Can curve three into Shadow Weaver if he likes. Or Diving Griffin. So you're thinking that over the Zephyrus on this turn. You want to go for Wild Growth? I, I don't know if he's going to have the time for that. I yeah, yeah, am yeah, yeah. looking yeah, 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 at... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch well, of rushes. The, the one other option is Coin Zephyrus Forked Lightning if you really want to stop the damage coming oh, through. Oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, I think you, you're not under that much pressure to where that's worth it. Yeah, Blister, I think, was just thinking about where the trades go, and I think this is very smart. It requires something more than hero power to deal with, but unfortunately for Blitzchung, the punish is there. Umberwing hero power. At the very least, it did deter the Frozen Shadow Weaver on this turn, which would have even more pressure coming down on the board. Speaking of Frozen Shadow Weaver, is that what Blitzchung goes for now and not freeze face? Oh, that's pretty good. Gives him a clean answer for the 3-2. Yeah, so yeah. The trade of the, the, the Sightless Watcher into the Frozen Shadow Weaver yeah. was just that little bit too bad. Yeah, I was thinking he freezes the Sightless over the face, but obviously oh, the okay. Sharpshooter oh, sure. saves yeah, yeah. his own problems. I'm looking at Kane Face. Kane Face? Cool. I grow no traits? Impatient. Don't like it? Um... I feel that if on turn four, Blitzchung is going to be using his hero power to deal two damage to a minion, that's a win for you anyway. And then mm -hmm. the trade of 1 3 into a 1 1, well, he can just kill it with the other 1 1 in the other wing. If that happens. Right. Sammy T playing it safe as always, though. <laughs> Look at you calling Hunteris Casper and Samuel Tao, Sammy T, and Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop name dropping. So, tracking Diving Griffin looks pretty simple here. Waste Warden gives him game against demons. Demons? Yeah. Demons. I, it's probably just the best card, though, overall. Like, the rest are a little bit too slow, and he just needs reactive answers, I feel like. Exactly. Sorry, I said demons, and then you blew a raspberry, and it just made me think of Illidan going, demons? Demons. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay for that alternate voice line, I'm just saying. Oh, look at that freeze! <laughs> wow! The timing, going into turn five. That is worlds apart in terms of how this game shapes out now. Turn three, turn five, best times to go for... Frozen Shadow Weaver, but Samuel Tsao still got Demons. game of his own. Demons. Could just load up the Metamorphosis if he likes, but I'm partial to even developing an, his yeah. own Shadow Weaver, even if it floats some mana. Freeze the other Shadow Weaver. Demons. Is it cold Demons. in the shadow? Wow, what do you know? It's like watching Frozen. With two Elsas? Yeah, that's Frozen 3, where she goes back in time to stop herself. Is that not... It's Frozen Don't tell game? me you wouldn't watch that. <laughs> Spoilers. Wow. Depends on the music. I definitely like the Frozen 1 better than Frozen 2. Agreed. Demons. Demons. Okay. Diving oh, Griffin or just... Zephyrus or Lightning Storm? I, I, oh, oh, Shadow, Shadow Mana. Yeah. My mindset is still in the uh, mm -hmm. old school format of Shadow Madness when it comes to AoE, but that is true, so true. clean there. Mm -hmm. Just makes the turn six for Blitzchung a little bit awkward, but from then on, all of the bombs start dropping. Speaking of bombs, though. So yeah, many Samuel choices. South has some insane turns. Glavebound Adept is obviously the most powerful right now. 
The but I'm wondering is... if he even saw this killing off the minion here. This is where you should start going face. Is it though going into turn six from Hunter? I think this is a turn where you can still afford to take board and it's expensive for them to trade. It's before Seomot, before Dino Tamer Brian. Yeah. And then he could potentially get six damage where this would have done five. Uh, sorry, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is uh, decidedly not going to work out that way though for him. Because mm -hmm. Kaka! Oh. It is just a, an absurdly powerful card, Diving Griffin. I still can't get my head around it. Now it's so good. Complete. Kind of just like a Shadow Ball, unless you get it from Mount Seller, in which case... It's like it, a Shadow it, Ball. It draws a card. Yeah. <laughs> shadow right. Ball that draws right. a card sounds busted. All right, all right. That's pretty busted. I beam off the top means Samuel Tao doesn't even need to use... Um, the metamorphosis to get rid of the bone chewer brawler. Do you not just want to go twin slice plus the one ones and then hero power face I to get it down while you can? All right. Yeah. Maybe yeah, that's a little bit overly aggressive. If he had supplementary damage, I would get yeah. behind it. But it looks like the game might not necessarily end next turn. Right. Yeah for I beam and he does milk extra damage from the minions this way it just takes another turn to get online it okay, got attack with the face first because it is going to brawler Rushwin Fury, he's got to be defensive here, even though it feels awful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, with the hero power in Metamorphosis form, you do have to. I was wondering if he could get away with oh, Rush yeah. Wind Fury for a surprise lethal. Oh, sorry, Divine Shield Wind Fury ah. for a surprise lethal next turn. The upside of the Rush Wind Fury is that the, the minion still lives, so it has to be at But in terms of more pressure on board, or sorry, more stats on board. This achieves that just a little bit better. This is gonna hit the sea. Obviously, there were no draws for Chaos Strike, given that's one of the cards that Samuel Sauer's cut to find room for these sightless watchers. Okay. Uh, definitely not a swap that I'm a fan of. Uh, I like just a little bit of extra burst damage that Chaos Strike affords you. But this may be able to find him the extra damage off the top next turn. Altruous. Or the Warglaves. Both of them just set up lethal. Given that the hero power has two shoots. Sorry, one shot. Right now. So we should go I beam first so that it doesn't outcast up to one. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Hero Power is always going face here. I was wondering if he wanted to use the refreshed Hero Power instead to yeah. develop a 2-2. So was I. I guess getting rid of the 4-2 protects his own 4-2. Man, getting down to the wire, but since Blitzchung doesn't have his Zephyrus remaining, he's just working with the hell out. And He is, but Warglaves are guaranteed next turn and one damage of lethal now. <laughs> so if Samuel Sao can go... Sorry, if Blitzchung hits Siamat with Divine Shield... Taunt? Is it ever, is it ever Taunt Wind Fury here, Gia? Is this the time ah! where it's correct? I grow impatient. To set up for lethal the turn after. But then the seen both I beams. But the Warglaze just goes through it. it oh it? yeah. Unless but... you can set up lethal through that. I don't think so. Yeah. Alright, fine. It's not Divine Shield. It's not Taunt Wind Fury this time. Thinking about chewing through one minion here. I mean, there's 22 I... damage represented there either way. Looking at the list, I think it's pretty cut and dry. There's just no outs either way. 
Oh, but not saving a charge Traitway does actually damage. Yeah, no, 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 not saving a charge does just walk into seal mod. Right. Oh my gosh. So we are gonna see the rare. <laughs> okay, not necessarily Wind Fury, but I'm liking the look of it because it gives Blitzchung an out for lethal next turn while protecting him from what Samuel Sao currently has on board. So if he goes Divine Shield plus Torn, he's still dead to second war game, right? I think so. Right. So I think it's actually correct here to go Wind Fury Torn. Oh, to be fair, this also sets up lethal just with oh, burn. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but this that is... off the top ah! was Wait. the Glaive Bounder depth there for Samuel Sal. Oh! oh it was man. such a good setup for Blitzchug there. He got so, so close in the end. But Samuel Sal was able to get over the finish line. Into the wire. So clean from both sides until that very last turn from Samuel Sal before the yep. Glaive Bound. Or we thought it was pretty much 100% if he just saved his Warglaze charge. Had to rely on the top deck there, and thankfully for him, he got it, but could have given himself 100%, I think. Yep, I would definitely agree with you there. It's not like he's taking any more damage if the game only lasts one turn, because of course he takes mm -hmm. the damage from the Zixor Primes anyway at that point. It was just, yeah, a little bit of a, a miscalculation, I think it's fair to say. Maybe he's factoring in something we're not thinking about, like Dragon Queen Alex Straza. Okay. Out on the following turn is possible into Nozari uh, or some kind of nonsense like that. But I definitely agree with you overall that that was a stronger way to go about it. But now we are down to only the Hunter left for Samuel South, the Highlander Hunter yet again, which to be fair, overall has been looking pretty good. But for Blitzstrong on the other side, he has his own very strong matchup first of the Demon Hunter up against that. Yep. I get the feeling we're going to be seeing the reverse and then the mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm predicting a game five because we've had it too easy in a fact too many three o's. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta work for our bread here in game yeah. five of the day or series five I should say of the day. But Samus out first of all does have a pretty powerful starting curve. Here. You just want all these cheap cards at the start. And taking a look at the secrets that he is running, he is a one freezing trap, one snake trap gamer. And so he's not able to hit the very, very powerful Explosive Trap, which is a bit of a downside for him. Definitely is, because Blitzstone's list is not even running the Beaming Sidekicks. I will say, though, the Imprisoned Felma seems to not impress me very much against specifically Demon Hunter that wants to be playing Crusader Overseers, and it trades very poorly into that. Also, Frozen Shadow Weaver. That will draw him either Zixor or Diving Griffin, given that Face Stalker is already in hand. Mm -hmm. Both of which are premium on the following turn. Maybe not so much the Griffin. At 5 health, probably trades down into whatever Blitzchung develops, plus some damage from hand. So are you expecting Belmore then instead? That's my gut instinct. It's really great if you get Zixor, though. Oh, sorry, 7-4. Miscounted. Mm. That is a huge draw for Blitzjump! My gosh! Yeah, that is exactly what you're looking for now. He is in prime position with no explosive trap available once again. For Samuel Sao off the Phase Stalker to just absolutely dominate this board. What is this Diving Griffin even doing? Worst card in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, that's a great draw though for Samuel Tsao. Mm -hmm. Allows him to clear off the Seder Overseer. But it always just feels like too little, too late, even as early as turn three against Demon Hunter. If you're just playing one minion, shooting off one of theirs, they're still left with a 2 2 and a growing minion. They don't even need to trade with the one you develop. Yeah, it, it, it gets a little bit more complicated for Blitzchung on the other side as to whether he goes second slice with his Overseer to go for maximum development as quick as possible, or if he saves it for Glaivebound Adept. But either way, I can definitely agree with you. It does not end well for Samuel Sao. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could just say Griffin go to get the... Oh, this trade! Breaks my heart! Ah! 
Yikes. I, I understand going for it to get the Zixor Prime, but I've never oh, seen a 7 4 deliberately oh, rushed, deliberately rushed into a 4 2. That is far and away the worst trade I've ever seen in my life. And I've had to play Settlers of Catan with my girlfriend. <laughs> I find that strangely relatable. <laughs> Oh man, no explosive trap here is just all the difference. It's so brutal. Like, he would be so far in the lead, or at least so much in the game if he had an explosive trap there. But he has nothing. And Blitzchung, meanwhile, just ha has curve after curve. There's no reason to hold back on a wide board except, I guess, Zephyrus, in which case you're fine. Zephyrus, Shadow Flame, at the, at, that's just resets for Samuel Cell. Then he could just play a 6-4 because the Diving Griffin's been used. Unleash the Hounds, also not available for Samuel Cell right now. Yep. Not seeing it. Felmore is just straight up a dead card at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are living in the uh, the universe where Samuel Sao didn't hit six or prime. Yeah. Um, off the start of the game, which would have been a vastly different story, of course. But this is a consideration he has to take into account when he didn't go for the Felmore on two. Yes, indeed. Let's try. I'm gonna hold both wave bounds because. He just knows attack and play on the one is just lethal. Yeah. So the best thing that Samuel Sao can do here is Zephyrus Holy Nova, which heals him up to five, and then he dies. I love it. The best thing he does, still dead. Yeah. That was awfully one-sided. But you bring up a very good point. The scavenger's ingenuity was a calculated risk. It could have been such a huge swing had the Zixor stuck and been the one drawn. But sadly for Samuel Sal, this is the bad universe in which he is living. He's just going to have to concede and take it up in game five with a mirror of Highlander Hunter. And to be perfectly honest, there are few people I would like to face less in the world on the Highlander Hunter than Blitzchung. It's just his bread and butter and has been this exact type of play since the start of Hearthstone. Very true. You bring up a very good point a uh, while ago with Blitzchung not being so much of a face aggro gamer. There's also a type of aggro gamer that is very proficient with the micro decisions, yeah. taking trades on board, playing perfectly when the time to go faces. And oftentimes that's not at the beginning. Blitzchung is able to turn the corner very consistently in that regard. So I think that this will be a tough one for Samuel Tsao. And looking at the lists, you're already seeing a difference in that Blitzchung is not running the secret package altogether. So his Scavenger's Ingenuity will consistently draw three drops. That's right. And he's also got a little bit more of the early game. Therefore, because of that, he's able to fit in a Guardian Orc Merchant. Uh, org Merchant, sorry, don't uh, get that the wrong way around, uh, which gives you just a little bit of extra trading potential to try and lock down the game early on. Uh, he's also got the Frozen uh, Shadow Weaver as well, which is not especially powerful in the matchup. But I think basically it's just kind of more consistently good cards he's got rather than the awkward spell package. But to be fair, the spell package can be very, very powerful. In a deck that often plays one powerful minion on curve in the mid game, Freezing Trap mm -hmm. can just absolutely blow your opponent out the water. I would make the same point about Snake Trap for mm. similar reasons as the face, uh, sorry, Dragon Hunter Mirror, previous meta. Usually, once a Snake Trap comes down, you just never want to trade because it is just too many resources you're giving your opponent. Yeah. And whereas Hunter really struggles to deal incremental damage outside of Desert Spear and a conditional Unleash the Hounds, giving your opponent snakes suddenly can let them dictate all of the good trades. It can indeed. We'll have to see what they're going for, because also you have to remember in this matchup, it's not just a straight up aggro matchup, despite we've been describing Blitzchung as the kind of champion of that. Uh, with all the late game that you have in the deck, I find there's a very consistent game plan you can go for, uh, especially if you hit Zephyrus at the start of the game for wild growth and really just try and tempo or uh, turbo, I should say, 
through to your late game cards as quick as possible. Yeah, the race to Dragon Queen Alex Raza is kind of a story for almost every Highlander deck mirror. Rogue definitely has that interaction yep. where the first one played is very difficult for the opponent to answer, and then they just get the lethal. Obviously, that is even exemplified as well by Tino Tamer Bran, which if that comes mm. down, even if the answer is there for the 8-8, eight, eight, you've still dealt the 8 damage to your opponent. Uh, and therefore, we could see Blitzchung Mulligan quite aggressively here for that Zephyrus, which I think is pretty much exactly what we see. He holds on to the one drop because it's fantastic, but even the ooze there was very worth considering keeping just playing on two. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised because being able to ooze something like uh, Desert Spear or Stormhammer could be very relevant in the matchup. But oh my gosh, both of the secrets for Samuel Tsao drawn! So, <laughs> that is so unlucky. A Stalker well, not getting any added benefit. We're, uh, we're River Crocolis gamers now, Gia. This is how Samuel Tsao has to operate. The absolute worst case scenario. I mean, to be fair, he does have a curve, though. Yeah, I say it's the worst case scenario. He can just play the secrets. These are pretty good secrets overall to just play out, even if it's not what he wants to do. Yeah, the small benefit of being able to choose which one goes in which order, yeah. I think, is heavily outweighed by just not having two other cards in hand right now, though. He's got a pretty good curve of his own. Even Zixar developed for tempo into bone rate. It's defensive, mm -hmm. but it could be what he needs. That's a good boy. Belmar right there. Is that a Zephyrus? Whew. It is indeed. Okay. So already on this turn, I'm thinking options include Zephyrus Shadow Word Pain, but it doesn't look that good given that the 2-2 can still trade in and you're really not that far ahead on board at that point. I am looking at a Stalker Snake Trap. Mm -hmm. I like the look of that. <laughs> Without the hero power, it feels so bad to say that. <laughs> but you just hope that your just... opponent looked away and thought that you pressed the hero power. That's the, the best part. Mm -hmm. Just wait for Tyler to get up. And then you know, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, Blitzchung is not having to answer any deliveries at the moment. Yeah. We'll get tunneled in by the fact that the minion isn't getting its full value. More important for Samuel Tsao right now is to play the most stats onto the board while preserving Zephyrus for a better use later on. And of course, Freezing Trap, not very good when Blitzchung has a 2 2 available. Ooh. So we're looking at test for freezing with this. Nice. And then he can coin the faceless. Take two VTs and then trade down a snake as well. That is so powerful. Absolutely devastating. So far ahead on board. And obviously Samuel Sauer has the trump card in Zephyrus to try and swing things back for him here. But this like turn th or three mana left over is one of the weirdest spots for Zephyrus in order to try and actually swing things back. I was saying at first take two VTs, but uh, maybe the one way Blitzstrom falls behind is if this Felmaw gets to go face too many times and then a Bran right. or Zephyrus out of nowhere could deal the lethal. Because I was saying this but would be an awkward Zephyrus. Sorry, um, I was just going to say this would be an awkward Zephyrus, but it will offer you Shadow, Word, uh, Shadow Madness here, which would be a very strong way uh, to wrestle back the board and shuffle a Zixor Prime into your deck while you're at it. That's a good but point. But he's still holding off again. It would remove two minions, but not leave a good way to deal with the 4-3 here. I think Samuel Tsao is instead isolating it with okay. Freezing Trap. The yeah. game plan is to get to a safe Siamat. I can respect this. I like this a lot, yeah. Maybe I was just overly fishing for a way to make it good there. Given that, of course, the Zixor Prime in your deck is a, ne a very small benefit. Desert Sphere is just going to completely defuse the secret plan from Samuel Tsao, the rush mm. minion returning into Blitzchung's hand. If Blitzchung likes, he can just play the Corrosive Breath even without the additional face damage. I think it's good to allow his faces to go face. Yep, very, very smart play. Oh, 
Oh, oh man. Clearing off all the snakes. That is... Just in time. Just in time. But he can get the rush from the Desert Spear. Oh, yeah. Oh, of that. course. Sorry, yeah. Coming at it from completely different angles there, weren't we, Gia? Hey, <laughs> one of us an idiot, one of us not. That's all right. I think we're out of balance. We <laughs> tend to cover each other when one is being the idiot. <laughs> what? Samuel Tsao wants something different. This is a mana short of Harrison, even. I'm not sure what he was going for. And whatever Doesn't... it was he was going for, I don't think he got it. Yeah, I agree. Was he thinking of maybe Water Elemental? It actually lines up okay on this board. He's yeah. a weapon, potentially. I wonder. Huh. But these are garbage, Gia. They really are. A healing touch. He's How much above... damage has he even taken? Not very much. I think he's above 10 health. He's definitely Do above you... 10 health. Yeah. You probably just take Holy Smite to clear yeah, it off here, and then you cry do. yourself to sleep. Mm -hmm. You do when you feel bad. He prefers the development. This sounds like... Oh, what? what was I that? I thought Zephyrus got patched! <laughs> so, so... Was it Ooze he was looking for then, specifically? No, then he would have Hero Powered first, right? Right. I think it yeah, was yeah. Water Ellie, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Very, very weird. Especially as Zephyrus in the previous two turns had pretty good options. Mm -hmm. And this was the first turn where I just thought it looked really bad. <laughs> hey, waiting for the next patch then. <laughs> yeah. um, unleash the Hounds with the Desert Spear. He can just push the Faceless to face yet again, fit in the Hero mm -hmm. Power role into Siomat for the next turn. But he's got to be worried about Samuel Tao's own Siomat. Yeah, we're looking at Siomat and we're looking at Dino Tamer Brown, of course. Uh, uh, Blitz trying to play around to the best of his ability. I don't really see much of a way that he can play. Sorry, uh, play around the King Crush. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just going to go face. Not much he can do about that. He's got a Bone Raid. That's the way you play around King Crush. You trade in your Twilight Raid. <laughs> <laughs> and then you make top five plays. Indeed. Ooh. Not this turn, but that's. Potential for Samuel Tsao to put the race back on Blitzchung. Of course, Absolutely. that is barring the Stormhammer, which we can see Blitzchung already has. I wonder. This just looks like a Siomont Divine Shield rush to me. Is it Divine Shield Wind Fury? You could trade the Zephyrus into the 4 3, and you, okay. I mean, you can clear off everything without taking any damage. Okay. Taunt? Wind Fury? <laughs> The rare seal? Oh, you're so close there. I like where your head was at with the Wind Fury because he also still has this Desert Spear charge. To right, I mean, clean up the hounds. This plays around uh, Dinotome and Ran on the other side is the reason to go for this play quite clearly. Right. I wonder if he could consistently beat that though. I wonder. I'm gonna go ahead and say no. But right. if Blitzchung has neither Bran nor Siamat, what is he praying for? He's got a good play already, just the Siamat. Well, I mean, he's just hoping that he's not dead on the backswing through okay. another Dino Tamer Bran from Simon South side. Alright. That wouldn't be lethal, though. Uh, you're correct. Well, in that case, it looks pretty much like Blitzchung is in a winning position. That doesn't help. Dragon oh, he Bane has Kill Command clear. in the deck. That's what he was right. praying for. Okay. Dragon Bane cannot clear. That looks like GG to me. There's uh, no deadly the shot, is there? Big ol' well mm. into... No Freezing Trap's been used. No Shadow... Uh... Yeah, there's no freeze either. Mm -hmm. Not, I think Blitzchung has this one on lockdown in a very tense last couple yeah. turns. Hmm. Is there something we're missing? Even if there isn't, you can never blame a player for just. 
doing the double take over and over. Let's show him with a cheer. Definitely one of our more emotive players. And every one yeah. of those in APAC is a precious resource, I must say. Such a big deal for Blitz Chang there, Jia. He is able to go up to 3-0, and our first player, I believe, down in Division B to get up to that flawless scoreline after his first three games. Very, very well done from him there. But to be honest, even though I'm happy for him, the real standout for me was just, uh, I'm kind of left just still perplexed with uh, uh, without words as to what Samuel Sao was thinking of there. Like you said, Water Elemental is a good guess, but even then, is that better than just going for the faceless Corruptor there in order to lock down mm -hmm. the board guaranteed, take right. no damage on that turn? It just felt so yeah. much easier. I'm also left in the dark about that one. Today has been full of ups and downs. I think we've seen some of the most dramatic and oh, yes. uh, high stakes misplays throughout the day. And these players are human and the morale is a huge deal when you're already 0-2 going into it with only after their third game, just four matches left to try and avoid relegation altogether if you're in Division B. It's just so stressful. It is. But let's take a review of the games we saw because I feel like the trend is coming true more and more where the players who are doing well are the players who are just not letting the pressure get to them. Surrender, Tom, obviously are two players from APAC who qualified to the global finals last year in seasons one and two, are the two most storied competitors that we have here. Tom, a previous world champion, surrender multiple world appearances and very, very well, uh, done very, very well when he gets there as well. Whereas we've seen Dawn struggling a lot with the nerves. We saw Frosty roping out there at the end. Samuel Sauer, don't really know what was going on there in that final game. And the players who are just keeping it chill, very uh, even mindset, are doing much better overall. That is a very good point you bring up. Let's show our first player to go 3-0 overall wow. because we haven't seen our Division A players who are already 2-0 play today yet, but they will be on later on this weekend. Each player gets to play at least one match. It's going to be four players each weekend that only play one match. Please. It's going to be some very exciting stuff. Gia, I can't wait to see also not only at the top end, but also down at the bottom end. Blitzchung has been doing so well. And despite the fact that he has a very similar strategy and lineup to Kin, it's not working out for Kin. He's down 0-2 now and 7th and 8th place at the end of the round robin for Division A are up for a potential relegation. Once again, they will play against 5th versus 5th uh, and 6th, sorry, from Division B. And the one player out of those four who performs worst will be eliminated out of Grandmasters, relegated out along with 7th and 8th play, place from Division B. So it is just getting so high stakes. And it is not going to slow down, Gia, because after this week, we will be halfway through our round robin for these players. Oh, lightning fast, uh, not just APAC as a region, but GM as a whole, so few chances to prove what you have, what it takes, that you deserve to still be a Grandmaster going into the next season. And so far, it's been every end of the spectrum and everything in between today. I think from Staz, I loved a lot of the lines he took, yep. and then a couple we disagreed with from Tom, um, pretty clean all throughout, but maybe the lineup choices were yep. a bit surprising, as we always can see from Tom but still chill overall. I think that Ape are really showing what they're made of. I agree. I, I'm loving casting Asia Pacific. I, I, uh, I don't want perfect play. Obviously, you basically never see it in Hearthstone, but I love the flashes of brilliance we're seeing. Overall, I've been much more impressed this year than what we saw last year, but there is still just that little bit where we can pick up on players who need to try and improve in order to get over the finish line. One of the big stories of which is, of course, Samuel Sao taking another loss in that final game there uh, of the day. But we are all done now with Asia Pacific Hearthstone Grandmasters for today. It was very, very quick, but now, of course, we can slow it right back down again with Europe, with Raven and Subtle, where it should be <laughs> a little bit of a longer game overall if any of the previous weeks are anything to go by. But for now, I just want to say thank, thank you so much for joining us here in Asia Pacific. Remember to subscribe if you're enjoying the Grandmasters content so that you always know when we are live. But from all of us, thanks for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow. For now, enjoy Europe.